Johnny Ward, we're going to start in the red this morning. And I think we're going to start with um, a couple of the performances that didn't go so there well. Wow, yeah. look at those. Mayo fans and Toronto fans, look away now. Yeah, we heard Roy Keane there, obviously. He was, he, he, he still, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Vincent Hogan was on here recently saying that he never got the fascination of Roy Keane, but when he was uh, shown in the crowd at the Cork game, yeah. it's still like, there's still a draw. I don't yeah. know what it is. When he, when he smiles, it makes you smile. I don't know, it's something, there's something, he just has it. Anyway, two teams that didn't have it. Um, now, I didn't do the performance rankings, and I'm going to sort of go on the other side a little bit on this particularly in, in the sense of Tyrone I think Tyrone came up against a phenomenal performance from Kerry particularly defensively and I think if you're going to bemoan teams who um, you know when when Tyrone beat Kerry a couple of years ago it was a completely different game and Kerry would have learned from that but if Tyrone had played um a very defensive style of football in this game um, I think they would have stayed in it a bit longer but they sort of trusted their uh, defenders against Kerry uh, to kind of manage them uh, better. And to be fair, David Clifford, I don't think he scored from play until about an hour in, at which point the game was over. And he'd done, um, he done plenty around the preview of the game. I don't know what you thought, Shane. I thought the defensive performance of Kerry, and I think Peter Canavan showed it quite well in the Sunday game last night. When Tyrone got into any sort of a situation, the, the relentless kind of hunger of the carry backs to swarm around them mm. and there, there just wasn't an obvious out ball on a lot of the time so Tyrone ended up kind of going around the pitch um, at the end of the first half Harches had a pot shot because they basically run out of time and they were trying to kill the clock because they knew it was coming up to half time but I, I, I know they fell away in the second half but I think if you look at um, some of Kerry's kind of scoring as well David Clifford obviously got five but only one from play Sean O'Shea won five Jeremy O'Connor was phenomenal and you're, you're actually wondering do they have the legs now in midfield maybe that they wouldn't have had obviously with David Moore and would be more old school mm. I thought Kerry were phenomenal I really did um, and I was just thinking Jesus they're definitely going to win the All-Ireland until I saw Dublin yeah. but it's literally I'd be gobsmacked if it wasn't the two of them in the final I yeah. thought I thought Kerry and it, it was almost this feeling like the championship's been a bit weird in the sense of when are you trying to peak here when you know there's a lot of and I'm kind of maybe a little bit worried about Limerick next week against Galway because are, are Limerick just have Limerick just been taking the pace a bit because <laughs> on the basis of Kerry's forms yesterday they were literally getting ready for two or three games mm. I thought Kerry were phenomenal so um, on that kind of note I am um, you know I, I give Tyrone an out Mayo probably just looked very very tired and the concession of the goal was an absolute killer it was the same for Cork the concession of the goal it's such a bad goal to give away there's no coming back in Gaelic football I know they came back from six points down against Dublin in that memorable semi-final but like when that goal went in and uh, you know the bench that Dublin have I know men me mentally Car Mayo's heads kind of went down but I think that was understandable but it was I mean it's very very disappointing They've Mayo have gone from a team that like never lost comprehensively at any stage in the championship to two really really meek exits in the last couple of years that would worry me a bit and it also makes me worry, wonder about Galway because we obviously lost at home to Mayo and Mayo were out of their depth yesterday in the second half yeah yeah. I mean the um, like Tyrone Kerry had all the makings of a classic in the first 20 minutes yeah you know Rory Canavan equalises a beautiful point yeah. like Canavan Brothers over. got great scores yeah, yeah. and uh, that's six points each you know yeah. 15 minutes before half time yeah, man. and then you're thinking the exact same thing with Dublin Mayo it was tit for tat for the yeah. first half it was like this is going to be a classic thank God because we need a classic <laughs> and uh like there's a comment in here this morning like after all the excitement of the build up to the quarterfinals is Gaelic football still in a bad place is a poor to watch and like you have to say look highly anticipated all four games were kind of intriguing in their own right yeah but there was only really one memorable classic from all four we're not going to be looking back in the other three no no not particularly see I, I, I was thinking about this though the, what does this say about Gaelic football because in isolation some of what not only Kerry and Dolan produce but some of the other teams as well some of their point scoring and some of their defending like is off the charts quality like off the charts what David Clifford obviously did for the goal um, Dublin's point taking the second half was phenomenal mm. so if, to, if Derry were playing Kerry this week if Dublin were playing Kerry this weekend it would have been a game of the ages yeah. like one of the greatest ever and I don't know what that says about the fact that Mayo and Tyrone were just so so unable to go with these powerhouses because I think they were phenomenal I really do think yeah. Kerry and particularly Kerry but Dublin as well were phenomenal in the second half well even like Desi Farrell afterwards yesterday was kind of 
you know, he's very much humble anyway, but he was sort of saying, like, the first half was competitive and the second half, he, he said straight away, like, Mayo couldn't keep up with so us. One five and, reply. Yeah, yeah, and he acknowledged the fact that it's three weekends in a row. Yeah. But it's Mayo's doing, like, if they exactly. didn't capitulate against Cork, they wouldn't have had to have played Galloway last yeah, weekend. that was the game, mm. wasn't and it? That's why they, and that, that actually is the beauty of this new championship. It punishes you. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's why it's Galway's, exciting. Look at Galway's situation that they ended in because they didn't win the group, like, and uh, I, 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 in fairness, it's been knocked, but it has worked in the favour of the teams that did best in the group. Totally, but you know, for say the neutral observer or even if you had a hand in any of those eight teams it's like if there was just a weekend off between these quarterfinals would they have been closer matches Yeah, especially the second half of the two bigger games mm. uh, look everyone expects Dublin and Kerry to, to play each other in the final I think Dublin are six point favourites with the bookies against Monaghan in the semi-final and I know Kerry are three point favourites over Derry as things currently stand so like you expect to see it look Derry and Monaghan will hope to have, have a say in those semi-finals and maybe cause a shock but yeah I think like look I, I said on the quick picks last week and I was getting a lot of messages from Kerry supporters that oh, you ruled them out and Anthony Moyles I'm sure was getting a few messages as well from Kerry fans but I just felt their own work were coming good but I have to say Kerry just well it was hard to really green. analyse Kerry or Dublin so far because neither have had a challenge yeah, and they have to go all this way this deep into the championship to actually have their first challenge and all they were challenged for was half an hour yeah. well yeah 30, 35 maybe 40 minutes at best yeah and then it but the, like Dublin's third quarter against Mayo <sighs> replicated the Such a third 2019 one as well, as well. Like, yeah, and like, brilliant Baskell's performance right so if you if you you bring him in and then you look at what their bench is, that must bench be bench a joke. It's extremely Rock, demoralizing. Kenny, Paul, McCaffrey, mm. McCaffrey. Like it was just <laughs> yesterday was like his energy when he came on. Like they were wrecked at about yeah. 60th minute. Mm. He just burst through the middle of the park, and they can't keep up with the guy. Like no. and also if his shooting accuracy was the level that he is, mm. this would have been an even larger victory. Yeah. Mayo's bench just wasn't on the same level as, as Dublin's and they did look leggy and tired in the second half it's, it, it's a difficult one off. for strength and conditioning coaches to say like we start our we start training and whenever right but we have to sort of vaguely peak with this ridiculous three week games in a couple of weeks schedule in the at the end of June yeah. how do we do this which we're not necessarily planning for either but Dublin and Kerry were sort of able to go through the motions up until now it would seem because they were so fresh like yeah. so fresh and the other lads weren't on the Mayo side how would you rate Kevin McStay's first year? Uh, good good first year uh, they'd obviously be gutted to go out the quarterfinal stage but I mean league champions it's hard to fault uh, like their league performances generally were brilliant uh, even the game they lost in the last round against Monaghan I mean Mayo had nothing to play for at that point um, kind of championship obviously disappointing to lose that day against Roscommon but I thought it was probably going to benefit them having that whatever it was six seven weeks of a break to prepare for the All-Ireland preliminary group stage whatever you want to call it Um but they'll certainly be disappointed looking back at that Cork game six point lead to, to kind of get, throw that away the way they did and then I think that that was the downfall as you said the, the Galway game probably took so much from them mentally and physically I don't think you can say Mayo had a good year because like yeah. if Parry Choice said Galway had a bad year like Mayo won the league but like ultimately who no, cares what, so, sorry what I mean sorry Kevin McST- from Kevin McStay's Kevin, Kevin point Kevin McStay, first year in charge yeah. like, McStay said afterwards he's he quite content with the first year and it's yeah. good for him and his yeah. coaching staff but then you look at the bench towards the end of the yesterday's game Aidan O'Shea and Parry O'Hara just looking into the distance a million miles yeah. there and they're thinking they're four, here, four we, here we, we go again gone. like Dublin back again like we're going nowhere in fact we're, we're getting knocked out earlier now this is the point before. you know it was traditionally the last decade is Mayor, semi-final or final Mayo were always was like, final. Going, going to the wire right that, that, that was a strange thing about the Kerry game last year how poor they were and they were probably beaten like even more comprehensively yesterday and I think mentally that's hard to get over They were they, the last time the last few times they've played real proper games in Crow Park they've been battered Yeah, and I yeah. think when you I, I don't know I, I'm not sure they're going to recover and I think Lee Keegan was thinking last night thank God I retired because I didn't waste another year of this um, and he must have been touch and go when they were getting to the stage of I could have given it another year and last night he's probably thinking I made the right call here well I'd say he wanted to play at half time mm. when it was tight mm. he didn't want to, yeah. you know I would say he missed it then like and I, that, like that's the match and then for mm. the and then the following 35 minutes well, like, you're, refle- you're reflecting on a disaster like, yeah. and that's how quickly you turned around but they are, they are in a strange position because McStay quite rightly can be satisfied not happy but satisfied with his first year mm. and then you have a group of players like his core players thinking this is another year mm. closer to the end mm. will I even it's, come back again yeah why would you bother so you have like, two very different feelings in the camp if I were Aidan O'Shea I'd be 100% retiring of that would you? not given another year of this like, Retire, would that be your last game oh, absolutely yeah oh, the way given another year but then you have, chance, you have chance for more silverware you know, league titles oh yeah, provincial I, titles I, I, maybe the chance of pushing on next year and Further in the All Ireland, put it out there in the in the pre-show meeting. I you know I, I'm watching on TV, 
and Aidan O'Shea gets taken off fairly early in the second half and all I can hear is the way from the yeah. Dublin fans that yeah. was just also when McCaffrey went on so it could have been a carry on for that but I think they were delighted that O'Shea went off sounding, yeah. so I thought geez, keep him on because he is causing them some bother but Kathleen McNamee who was there has a Mayo allegiance on her side the Sligo woman was saying oh he had to go off like he couldn't move mm. he could not move what do you think I, uh, they seem, they, they seem worried yeah, it was really early like. yeah. they, they seem really worried about him Dublin I'm not like mm. look O'Shea is not to be all and end all of this Mayo team far from it but like they they do seem to have this uh, respect for O'Shea and what he can do but, yeah, they, they and he did look wrecked but at the same time I was like if he can give you any bit more yeah. keep him on they found his position this year didn't they in the full forward line Like, and he doesn't even have to score he just has to set up you know Dunhu and Conroy around him just lay the ball off win the ball and lay it off but like you saw that in the second half like he like started to come a little bit further out the pitch and Paddy Andrews was chatting to Ashley after the match and yeah. I think he was a little bit confused as to why Aidan O'Shea was doing that whether it was a mixed or decision from the sidelines or whether it was Aidan on his own he was just drawn uh, into have, the ball or that's maybe, the chase of the game like. maybe he was just getting a bit tired and had to come mm. out the field to get the ball I don't know but but their tactic in the first half Mayo seemed to be effective in that they were targeting the flanks mm. they were going wide and long and fast mm. which yeah. seemed to be effective whereas in other years they've gone down the middle and the turnover of the ball is off the charts like Dublin are just so much better at it than Mayo yeah like McStay look he, he targeted areas that they need to improve out in the second or next year like the kick outs for example like in oh, their, he said yes like, you know what I mean? after the match the, double, the pressure Dublin put on Mayo's yeah, kick he said they're just not good enough to do yeah. that yet like. and Mayo's kick outs even against Galway where there wasn't much yeah. pressure but the win I suppose was and you know, and then if you're O'Shea or O'Hara whoever any of the veterans actually in that side O'Connor when he, came, or when he started and came on it's like you're so sick of hearing this like McStay is like we have room to improve like we need to improve in this area and that area yeah. and it's like we've been here for effing they're years they're getting like, further away like, you know they're I mean? actually getting yeah. further away than they were possibly yeah um, but you look at the t- look at the, look at the score lines that those two so we have Mayo and Tyrone in the, in the red but Mayo concede 2-17 uh, Tyrone against Kerry concede 2-18 those are, you cannot do that in, a, in, a, in Croke Park and all Ireland quarter final Paddy, uh, like Paddy Talley you mentioned Kerry's defence mm. ironically a Tyrone man that probably masterminded that, that Kerry defensive they out Tyrone Tyrone in some ways I've I, but like this was this this is going to be fascinating now with all due respect whatever happens in the semi-final how the two big teams prepare for the other and I'm, I'm not preempting the result here but if it happens because for a, for a coach to deal with how Kerry defended yesterday and they're going to put hours into this but yeah. God help them like seriously it was it was phenomenally aggressive and then when you have players if Kerry were to leave four lads up front and practically put everyone else they have so much quality going forward mm. the legs they have as well like you know I thought their midfield was so good Kerry midfield yeah, yeah and con- it was, considering everyone was like everyone was lack- and Patrick are going to dominate yeah, that yeah. wasn't the case at all and um, when you think you know Clifford scored once from play now he did one the most uh, we, we'll have to talk about the, the, the moment of genius I will get to that yeah. so I think I think um, Clifford <laughs> Clifford. I've, I've rarely heard him interviewed but I thought he summed it up brilliantly but he was on the periphery of the game and they absolutely hammered them ah. so I'd I'd, 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 I'd I'd really not fancy having to deal with how to tactically match up with Kerry going forward in this championship yeah let's not fret uh, we're moving on from, the, from that uh, element of the Gaelic football but we're going to come back to it, the performance rankings there's plenty more uh, but also in the Red Johnny, the uh, the ladies' GEA after the weekend protests uh, continuing. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I've, uh, I've 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 sort of listened to Shane Keegan on the the papers roundup yesterday. This is a it's a very complex situation um, in terms of the the schedule that exists at all levels, and you've court games clashing at the weekend as well. Um, and you know, the GEA saying they can't do anything about that. I know from my sister playing, um, you know, at club level uh, in Galway. Um, I know there was a feeling there that they're second class citizens really and um with, with with due respect, that's that's not actually that um, surprising. In the sense that historically the men have dominated sport in in Ireland, full stop. And I think the the progress that has been made in GA is phenomenal. I mean, where you get the crowds at these finals now is incredible. The participation is incredible. Um, but I don't know. This is it's going to be a long road. I don't know what you think, Colm. Um, one hundred percent. Like they look, the you just saw on the screen there. We put it up. The image of the, the unity, wearing, anyways. Uh, yeah, united for equality. Yeah, mm. the t-shirts. And uh, there's some good pieces written last week too. And you have other sports where like the male counterparts do um, do back the women to to get better coverage and also better conditions. This is what it's all about conditions and like the respect that they have or lack of in terms of how their preparation is treated for games. 
and it does seem like there's a massive disparity like look, look at even the tone of our performance rankings this morning like we're talking excitedly about the men's game yeah. uh, and that we built it up like to death like and here we are again reviewing it and we probably will talk about it uh, and we'll talk about it for the first half of this week until the hurling takes over and what we're talking about is all on the pitch stuff mm. The problem with the women's game at the moment is this is the second weekend in a row that the protests are there, which is great, of course, but they're also the second week in a row that they're red. And what we're talking about in the women's game at the moment is not about the play, not about the corner forwards, not about yeah. how um, a player should play full forward because they're more effective there. It's about the treatment of the players. And so the only thing you can hope for is that this time next year, we're talking about the women's game, the performance rankings for the actual play itself. And look, at least it's getting coverage it's good that this is the second weekend in a row in many ways yeah. but it's in a red for a reason and it's like why can't why can't it be a case where the conditions for the women and the money that goes into it can be the respect can be equal as it is on the men's side so then that all we have to talk about is the actual football and camogie <laughs> It just whereas this seems to be a never ending conversation of uh, before we even get to the game let's yeah. talk about this it, it's, it's a difficult one though. like if you if you read um Eamon Sweeney's article yesterday and we'll get to GA Go um, like the money that is being made off amateur players on the men's side for, it's, it's a really interesting issue the money that RT can make from advertising and GA Go can make and these lads are getting nothing yeah, you know, so you, you can extrapolate that from that then to the women's game. How do we actually fund this? Because there's a lot of money washing around. No, it is, and it's like, and also, uh, like the problem is, you're you're immediately talking gender when you talk about that because mm. it's the protest by the women. But like, mm. what you want again, like to reiterate, you don't want to be talking about gender. You want to be talking about the game itself. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman playing the mm. game, and we're we're still so far off that. Like, we're like making inroads to an extent. Like you see it in the in the women's soccer team ahead of the World Cup, and like increasing recently we're talking about the actual game and the play and just like you know critical analysis of a player who didn't play that well and like so it's, it's progress but at the same time even saying all that is there's an error of like it's a patronising tone you're taking like mm. and but we want to get so far beyond that and again it'll probably be the same next weekend like yeah that's the thing but though. like, but at the same time we can't ignore that like this is absolute shoe in for mentions because if we do ignore it it's, we're actually just replicating the treatment of those players so More we have to keep on saying that mm. and hopefully then we'll get to the point where we're just talking about what actually goes on the pitch mm. and then there's none of these protests but like if nothing's said the, the treatment will continue and it's right to the problem yeah, Mayo Leash even starting the you know walking back into the dressing room after mm. the national anthem for five minutes yeah, yeah. Late, like yeah that, that. and I mean also like people say like <laughs> people complain about protests when they're too disruptive mm. so they can probably even go further like. that's a very minor disruption five minutes, yeah, but they five could, minutes and, and, and I think they're, like, they're being incredibly respectful yeah. and it's it's a nice message and it's a progressive one and they could keep them going with it but like like some people complain about this uh, but they have to because yeah. if they don't if nothing's said then we wouldn't even be covering this that's the thing and I will I will mention the scorelines as well on, from the weekend's quarterfinals of the All-Ireland Ladies uh, Senior Championship Kerry 221 Cavan 25 big win for Kerry over Cavan Mayo trouncing leash as well 215 to 8 points uh, Cork putting 8 goals by Tipperary 812 to 23 and uh, Donegal pipping uh, Meath by 110 to 12 points so Meath will have to travel to play Kerry in the quarterfinals um, that is going to be the, in Kerry on the weekend of July 15th to 16th to repeat of last year's final but uh, good to mention those games as well move on to the amber you mentioned GA go how do we all feel about behind the paywall sports and GA action after this season I um, I always thought like GA go was for the diehards mm. right I thought it was someone who wanted to watch every single game possible and I thought it was a good idea I thought it was a really good idea actually for the people who are into I was thinking about the Tommy Rooney's of the world or anyone that's just one yeah. example then you have the the weekend of the quarterfinals and to have half of them be in the paywall. And not just that, right? If you're going to do that, fine. That's fair enough. But we were promised uh, additional highlights by RTE this year, mm. the Saturday game, because the Sunday game was just far too packed. You had two hours and they were rushing through everything. It was, a, it was an absolute mess of a show. Yeah. You come in and because they pay these analysts to come on the show, they were like, we're going to have to justify this payment. And so they're going to have to talk about the show or about the match at length. So you show about four and a half minutes of the match, <laughs> 10 and a half minutes of analysis. Back after the break with the next match, it's like, oh my God, this, this is so tiring yeah. to watch this. So you're flaking through all the games. You're not analyzing any of them properly. 
So, um, what's the solution? Okay, an additional highlights program. Brilliant. That Saturday game, excellent. We'll watch that. Have it recorded if you're out Saturday night. Go watch it Sunday morning. They have the two quarterfinals on Saturday on GA Go, and there's no Saturday game. Yeah. So there's a huge cohort of people in the country who are huge GA fans who probably didn't see a bit of action other than maybe the odd, like the David Clifford viral moment now with the pass. Yeah. But so many people didn't see either of those games on Saturday. How do we get to this point? Like, I, the, it feels to me that they had, they're working backwards. They had to justify the introduction of GA Go and people who paid for it. So it put half of the quarterfinals behind it. Mm. And uh, that, you know, that would reward those people. But you have a huge cohort of people who didn't see any of it. How are they not free there? Like, at at, at yeah. that level. When you see a Kerry Tyrone game, I know obviously it was one sided in the end, but that rivalry to be behind a paywall, and even it was when the Rian O'Neill point went over in the Armagh Monaghan match, and Armagh had essentially all but won the game. And then McManus does what he does. Like I was thinking for that little exchange, I was like, it's such a pity this is not on terrestrial television for just ne- neutrals to see. Oh, I know a lot of neutrals would have watched it on GA. No, and I like Sky Sports was the alternative option the last few years, and yeah. people always say like, look, look, like all these games weren't on free to air mm. all the time. Like, but when you're getting to this stage of the championship, like you have to show the games to the majority of the country. And even then, if you can't show it on RT one or RT two, use RT News now. Or use another channel that you have available. Yeah, but it's crazy. If you sit back and think like, geez, have we planned so much here that we're actually hurting ourselves here because GA Go was a great idea at the start of the year mm. and it, I thought it was great in the very early rounds when yeah. there's like, was it uh, Sligo New York I think was on it and I, like, I was like, that's perfect for it like if you want to watch that because there's going to be a core of people who want to watch that. Yeah. But then you get to the point where you're like, you want to show the game to as many people as possible. So we also put the condensed season in amber as well. Mm. So you're flaking through the games at an unbelievable rate. Like, so we, so we have this weekend we have the hurling semi-finals, mm-hmm. then the football semi-finals, and the hurling final, football final. Sure, it's all said and done. Like, <laughs> so they're hiding away the big game, the biggest part of GEA. So in the first half of the year, it has any sort of publicity at all, and then you're putting some of the biggest games behind GEA go, like they're hurting themselves. Yeah. No. My, my my sister was actually playing I think a junior club game in Connacht um, and I was working here on the Saturday and I could watch that on a stream and I think I had to pay a tenner and I was like this is phenomenal that I can play a tenner pay a tenner to watch my sister play a junior club ladies game in Connacht um, so it's a low level yeah. like really albeit in Connacht and that's one level but to have a situation where like say my father now and I, I don't mean to like the old people of Ireland flannel Ryan stuff here but my father our 4G where we live in Galway is awful, really, really bad. Right. So I paid for the Galway Derry game to watch for for him to watch in the laptop Last year. at home. Um, Galway Tyrone, rather. Sorry, yeah. In in the in the in the group stages, and it was really, really poor quality. But then to go to a situation where, and I'm with you, Colin, like earlier on in the season, to be to be shown games like like kind of peripheral games that you wouldn't want to see is a good thing. And not every game should be live. But when you have a situation where the likes of TG Carr is shown literally every club game under the sun and every league game under the sun, and it's blanket blanket free to air GA all year, and you don't have the two quarter finals on the Saturday shown, I thought that was absolutely bizarre it was like both games not both games behind a paywall uh, in the all Ireland quarter finals and like this is a, a sport that we're that let's be honest I think Gaelic football can't take its um, it's it's kind of position in Irish in the Irish narrative for granted because there's a lot of negativity around Gaelic football from diehard people that I talk to mm-hmm. and then putting games like so the Clifford piece of skill was behind a paywall I, I real misgivings about that I have to say yeah, it, it leaves a strange taste in the mouth. And look, from a commercial business perspective, I know it's it's profit making as well. So I understand that, you know, putting Kerry, Tyrone, or Armand Monaghan behind a paywall versus Sligo, New York, or whatever, is going to make more money. Twelve euro pop, I get that, but it's just such a shame. And and look, this is I, I'll reiterate. I said it on Friday as well. The actual coverage on Diego is is amazing. That, what like to do with Diego? Exactly. And I, I was watching Armand Monaghan on, on Diego, and like the there was analysis they were doing of Sean Jones's black card, and it was brilliant. Like. Aaron Kernan and Paddy Andrews were having a back and forth they were agreeing with each other but it was just the analysis is class uh, and the coverage is class Johnny that's a, a very good point as well the broadband issue leads to a lot of people it would be impossible for it. my father to watch that game in our yeah. house basically yeah. it's not possible that's the thing so yeah look I, I think it deservedly is in the amber like, but how, how, how was there not the Saturday game highlights that as that's, well like, yeah. that, like if that happens fine yeah, at least at least see the highlights. And look, I get on this weekend there was only four games, so I guess on a, on a, on a, on the Sunday game they had 
Yeah, but it's a bit of time to get into but on but Saturday but, that, then the, but then in the Sunday game so it's still two hours yeah. you're still trying to get through everything yeah, so true. just split it up yeah there's such a gap um, and in fact it would be better like because you could you could actually then take your time analysing the game properly mm. so then you show enough because there's only two games so you show enough of the game yeah. and then you can analyse it properly with people invested in it and then you do the same on Sunday night and Give it's a shorter space. show it's more palatable for people Mm. Oh, it was a no-brainer. Like, yeah, no, I agree. So I think uh, let us know in your comments what you what you make of the whole GA go that uh, the two games on Saturday being behind the paywall. We'll get into the green lads, and I think deservedly this is a, this is a random one. I was tweeting this yesterday. It just struck me when I was watching the end of the Dublin Mayo game. So the four All Ireland minor semi finalists this season were Kerry, Monaghan, Derry, and Dublin, and it's going to be a Monaghan Derry final next weekend. And then the senior semi finalists are Kerry, Monaghan, Derry, Dublin. I think that 2014 was the last time that happened. That's a billion to one, really. So it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. To have the same four semi finalists, the minor and senior, the, the group are just pulling away from the rest, Johnny. I think that's mm. what we're, Monaghan are lumping themselves into that little group. Um, but all four, we've, we've touched on Kerry and, and um, uh, Dublin as well, of course. But um, Monaghan and Derry will, of course, go into their semi finals as, as underdogs, big underdogs for some people. But that's just the way they like it. Derry were so purr in their semi final against Galway last season that they will feel like they need a statement. And I think Kieran Mina was asked about it yesterday, and he, I think he felt there was a little bit of disrespect. You know, Derry maybe not getting some big wins in Croke Park. They did beat Clare in the quarterfinals of Croke Park last year they got the win against Cork the weekend but they'll want a statement a semi-final win I, I thought it was a really polished performance like I was at the, I was at the semi-final last year and um I mean, as Derry were so negative that uh, I think they had to come back and recoil and say, like, we have to learn how to play a bit better than this. Mm. I thought their point taken was really, really polished. Like, their the first half, as much as they couldn't put Cork away, they were hitting lovely, lovely scores. They're very um, clinical. Like, they seem to just know they, they have never a, panic. They never they didn't panic. panic. And I, I was an absolute killer. Like, the, the Cork fullback with that goal, that was a beautiful goal. I thought because Rory McGuire, Rory McGuire, like, McGuire yeah, to, to make that run from the ball. position he was in and and the the, the way to the Pass, everything about that but the killer of conceding a goal straight away and when you concede a goal now in Gaelic football it really can take the goat out of you the um, marking was lax from Cork I think the, the goal they'd obviously still been it was, no, I, I, yeah. think, I think the goal they realised geez, this late into the game but God, we have a chance here yeah. half time there's only a point in it Cork, mm. Cork scored three unanswered points right to stroke a half time mm. so then you're very positive at the break um I even texted Lee Keegan who was on air and RT was like be nice to Cork now they're doing well and he was like yeah I will yeah but if they keep it up like and then I, that was the worry in the second half but like uh, yeah no you're right like Maguire took the goal brilliantly but then Conor Doherty within 60 seconds is, mm. is scoring for Derry and that summed it up and also the ease at which he scored like yeah yeah. You know, it was like the last five actually, minutes of a, of a game of Astral, unbelievable you know? hop though as well for skill like, I know what this, the, is, uh, this is the thing that Gaelic football with Doherty, but Ga- it was yeah but Gaelic football the doesn't advertise the skill level like there's so much negativity around like you know the Defensive structures. Some of the skill levels in all four games were phenomenal this yeah. weekend. That goal was among them. Yeah. And to be fair to Cork, Cork were the one team who will come home happy from the weekend because they know they've overachieved really this season compared to the narrative. They kept in that game for right until the end, pretty much. And they'll they went back with their heads in their chests. They were like, we, we we gave it a goal. Like we we um they actually had a chance to score again. Uh, so yeah. it was eight points to five to level it. That was yeah. just before yeah. their goal. So Driscoll um, pulled it wide when it wasn't a great, as good chance though. But looked he pulled free it wide. at the time. It, it looked free. Actually, yeah. looked free. So they. They did all right for a while, but like they had some like, big scalps this year. Like it's a bit like yeah, it's like like John Cleary said the same as Kevin McStay. Like it's been a decent year. Yeah, Do you know the Roscommon win was fantastic. Like beating Mayo as well, but for about three quarters of the game they were very good. But at the end, sure, like they, like Derry never got out of second gear. Let's be honest. Mm. Yeah, and and also their composure was just mm. so much superior to Cork because. Um, they knew themselves like that whenever they wanted they could set up but which you saw in the the reaction to Cork's goal yeah 100% you know straight away like and the two teams have similar enough styles to watch Derry and Cork like uh, and I think the blanket defence was poor yeah. if you're neutral like that game was dire From Cork I wouldn't say it was dire now I, I, do you think so no I didn't find Jeez, it dire I, I, was, I felt sorry watching it for people who were watching this I like, was neutral mm-hmm. and I still had like, a strange uh, I thought it was only I think the only, the only reason you found it interesting because it was relatively close for a while Possibly, maybe it got back to a point or two. I thought Terry's point taking was very good, and they were very measured. It was, it was interesting to watch the way Paul they Cassidy just, a couple of lovely. Well, scores. Yeah, yeah. said afterwards if if Carr could actually finish some of their chances, that it mm. would have been better again. And by like, the way, Brian Hurley obviously was carrying. Well, Hurley, injury, yeah, he like, came on like. But yeah. if if Hurley, if you can get Hurley and Sherlock on the pitch together, yeah, for, for the whole game, that that's an issue. And like John Cleary mentioned after the game as well, Cork's middle eight is a little bit older. Yeah, in in age, so that's probably a reason why they were maybe a bit flatter towards latter stages for Derry. But I still still think it's a great stepping stone for the, this Cork team. Yeah. James Dunne was full of praise for them at the start of the year, and they've kind of 
achieve that next year they have to push on and get promotion to Division 1 can't believe Cork are having their heads patted by the country uh, well deservedly so I know nobody nobody likes patting Cork on the heads but they deserve yeah. it what about Monaghan though uh, I've been waiting for this can lads. I, actually can I ask you one big one now for you right. what do Monaghan need to do to be Dublin <sighs> it's a big question yeah. six point underdogs according to the bookies um they need to keep it. It needs to be a point or two in it with sixty minutes gone, and at that stage, Monaghan just click into gear. Um, the kickouts, obviously, Dublin pushed massively on the Mayo kickout. Monaghan will be aware of that. The begging kickouts are going to be absolutely crucial against against Dublin, and they're going to need their fo- their forward line. Like the four M's are not even the forward line. McCarthy's a wing back, but he was unbelievable again at the weekend. McCarthy, Mohan, uh, McManus, and McCarn. I know McManus came off the bench. Um, but the thing I'll say about Monaghan, uh, they gave us so many days out. And I was talking the weekend, there's a sign outside Castle Blaney at the middle of the big Monaghan crest that just says, make it happen. And this Monaghan team have made it happen so often at the, at the clutch moments. McManus getting a lot of the credit, rightly so, for those clutch moments of the weekend. But there was a couple of things that I noticed that, that represent how cool Monaghan can be in the latter stages of a game that is so perilously poised there was the the um, the matter of celebration so at the end of full time McGinney comes on the pitch mm-hmm. remonstrates with the referee loses the head I would say a little bit mm-hmm. shoulders into Stevie O'Hanlon has a few words with Michal Bannigan is just getting involved and at the same point Vinnie Corey is composed walking off the pitch might have his own issues with the Sean Jones black card I have to say because after the game McGinney starts saying oh we had a load of yellow cards given out given out of the yellow cards Arma had four yellow cards Monon had two yellow cards and a black card that was absolutely never a black card so I don't think he can have many complaints about the, the card dishing out by Conor Lane um, so there was the composure level uh, reference even when Monon won the penalty shootout Finney Corey just little fist walks off even um, during, the, during the, the penalty shootout I noticed as well Ethan Rafferty makes a save from Gary Mowen and celebrates like the game is like the shootout is over and even after Began saves the, the winning kick so it's a it's a much more muted celebration, and I'd say the same for the Ray O'Neill and Conor McManus points. Like Armagh were essentially in their heads into the semi-finals, and and McManus literally as soon as he puts it over the bar, quick fist pump, runs over, grabs his water, gets ready for the shootout. So Monaghan have an iciness around the latter stages of a game. So I think if it, if they can get to within 60-65 even within a couple of points of Dublin, Monaghan will will stay cool. And very quickly, would you start Conor McManus? It's worked this year. Like the, the week Saturday was probably the long or the most time he's had off the bench in, in any single game. Like why why break a winning formula if it works? It works, and maybe he's better off coming off the bench. He's thirty six. You know, if the Dublin defenders are maybe a little bit tiring towards the end of the semi final, maybe McManus coming off the bench is exactly what's needed. So, um, I would say possibly don't change it. Like there's a couple of, even the sorry the Hawkeye breaking as well. I don't know what happened there for that for that incident. Yeah, they ball. didn't use it yesterday. But it was just it was a bit it wasn't a new that's, yesterday. It's a, yeah. That's a farce. But like it could have been a much bigger talking point. Say if Monaghan had lost the game or you'd, you'd have to say Monaghan are one of the most phenomenal teams in Irish sport in recent years for consistently just almost like always there the, like the ability to provide Division 1 football to their oh, fans at home for year, years after year, after year after year after year um, and that you almost felt you're looking at Kieran McGinney's win records in general as a coach against this Monaghan team you did feel that and I mean it was easy to say it after the event but mm. it, it's phenomenal now I, I, can't, I, I can't see any feasible way how you can live with Dublin on the basis of that performance mm. Everything but, needs to be perfect from a modern perspective. I'll, I'll but they should be everyone's that. second favorite team almost at this stage for just their defiance, like and living in a county that like is on the border wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, a lot of players I think playing and living in Dublin as well have to commute. Yeah. And I don't know, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And look, they, they, they have a ticket allocation probably of about thirty thousand man of the semi final, which is half, which the, is half in the county. county. Like which half is the insane. county. And believe me, they will use that that ticket allocation. Mm-hmm. What uh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, looking forward. Like I mean, Aidan Forger should get a mention as well for Armagh. McGinney, yeah, I don't know what McGinney does from here. Does he? Is that the last we've seen of it? McGee, or Kieran McGinney as the Armagh manager, possibly? Uh, no Ulster titles to, to his name as Armagh manager, and again a quarter final exit on penalties, three penalties should have exits in twelve months. Is oh, Anthony Miles has plenty to say in it on the penalties. We'll get to we'll get to Anthony Miles shortly. The, the final green we'll just mention before we finish up, lads, very briefly is the boxing, uh, the European Games. Uh, some really really excellent results from an Irish perspective, Johnny, at the weekend. Yeah, Aoife O'Rourke, who's uh, she'd be from Castlereagh. Um, down the road actually from where I'm from and uh, for her birthday as well she uh, took on um, Michelle from France and she spoke afterwards of the um, 
just the style of the game and the way that her coaches coached her through it. But um, Kelly Harrington as well. It was a phenomenal weekend for Irish boxing. I think five medals Amy in Wall all. As well, yeah, Amy Wall, goal, yeah. first Irish kickboxer to win a gold. Um, and yeah, talk about punching above their weight in terms of boxing, um, particularly the the women boxers. And um, yeah, she's uh, what a birthday present. And I think her her smile afterwards. Um, you know, I, I'm not much into boxing, but it was, it was interesting reading about Eva. Her smile afterwards is worth a million dollars. Yeah, it was class. Only well, France won more medals than Ireland mm. of the weekend. Oh, really? Two, five medals in total, one bronze, one silver, two to go with those three golds. So, look, I, like Irish boxing and combat sport has never been in doubt in terms of the quality, but like great to see it yeah. um, rejuvenated again and also re- everyone reminded over the weekend and then a year out from the Olympics. Not bad. Yeah. Michaela Walsh with the bronze, and I, I'd say, I'm speculating here, but I think the coaching levels at Irish boxing at the moment must be very, very good because. Yeah, um, Zora Antia. Yeah. Zora Antia is yeah. a legend. Like, yeah. He arrived in Ireland 20 years ago. <laughs> Look what he's done! Like what a story! And they all—they all speak so incredibly highly of him, yeah. and he's so publicity shy that you're never going to hear from him, which adds to the mystique. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So 13 days of competition in Poland, 121 Irish athletes competing across 17 sports, uh, and the team Ireland medal tally is that, as we're saying there, is 13: five in boxing, five in kickboxing, and one each in athletics, rugby, and taekwondo. So, Huge. from an Irish perspective, that's that's yeah. that's brilliant. Uh, it's uh, eight. I have to say seven. It's eight twelve a.m. on this uh, Monday morning's OTB and the sports breakfast 42 show. 42 minutes in already. Ball. 41 of them about Monaghan. <laughs> to be honest, I, I bit my tongue on Monaghan there for a while. I had you have more opportunity here. I, exactly, I did very well. Brayburn Coffee, should mention, is the official coffee partner of OTB. Brayburn Coffee, coming to an Apple Green near you. New Brayburn locations are popping up every month. So visit applegreenstores.com forward slash Brayburn to find your nearest Brayburn Coffee experience.